Uh, now, if Boris Johnson hoped that last night's cabinet resignations would be the end of the matter, well, events today have shown that his position hangs very much in the balance with a steady drip drip of resignations uh, beginning first thing this morning. Let's take you through some of them. Uh, it began with Laura Trott. Uh, she took to Facebook saying, I have resigned from my role as parliamentary private secretary to the P Department of Transport. Trust in politics is and must with regard to the former deputy whip. Uh, Justice Minister Victoria Atkins, she has also quit today. She wrote in her letter to the Prime Minister, values such as correspondent Mari Aurora, who's following events uh, in the studio with me this afternoon. Uh, Mari, all the letters from MPs, uh, uh, PPSs and the like have talked about integrity, truthfulness and competence. What happens next? There are various different options. The Prime Minister very clear, saying in the House of Commons today, he's not going anywhere. What are the options for those who want him gone and for the Prime Minister himself today? So for the Prime Minister, he has a small number of options. One we know is resigning, which he said he's not going to do. So that's kind of off the table. The next option is almost a split option. So the option is if the 1922 committee do change the rules and therefore call another vote of confidence, then there are two options. If he wins that vote, he will continue on as Prime Minister and even if he wins it by one vote, he will essentially have to lead a Tory party who a, a significant amount of them are really not his biggest fan. The second option is he loses the vote and then is therefore ousted as prime minister, uh, which isn't obviously a good look. Uh, you sometimes want to go on your own terms. Another option is if there is no vote and the 1922 committee do not change the rules and he does not resign, then essentially he stays as prime minister until something else changes, whether they try again to change those resource or whether eventually so many people resign that the government just isn't sustainable and he decides to essentially throw the towel in. So there are a few options there for Boris. None of them are very great. They're all pretty uh, dire options. He's in a pretty uh, sticky situation at the moment. And then for those who want him out, uh, the main mechanism is going to be the 1922 committee. We know that the executive, uh, the new executive, are going to be elected on Wednesday next week. Uh, depending on who's elected onto that executive, that could also be quite uh, damning for uh, Boris Johnson. We know it's only backbenchers who uh, are a part of that committee. Uh, so no one on the, on the government payroll, which would be the kinds of people who still do support him. So that could also be bad, especially because now we've got a, a ton of people who've already resigned who are now on the backbenches who really don't like Boris Johnson. So every way he looks, it's not good news. Yeah, and we might not be done yet. As we said, resignations coming in all the time and letters of no confidence going in as well. Uh, Mari, stay with us. Uh, we'll talk more uh, in a few moments. But uh, right now we're joined by Sarah Southern, former aide to David Cameron, and Will Tanner, uh, former deputy head of policy at Number 10. Good afternoon to you both. What an afternoon. Um, well, I'll first start with you. Um, your reaction to what's been going on today and whether, as Boris Johnson said in the House of Commons today himself, he can hang on. Well, I think this is um, clearly a moment where, while the writing has been on the wall for some time, it is the moment where we can very clearly say the game is up and Boris Johnson is now living on borrowed time. Um, it was already pretty implausible for him to lead the Conservative Party into the next general election, I think, um, but uh, especially after sorry, the no confidence vote um, last month. But I think it is now hard to see the Prime Minister potentially even leaving his party into the summer and certainly into the party conference after the summer recess. So um, it feels like events have turned decisively against the Prime Minister. Um, and I think any other leader um, would be very seriously considering their position at this point in time. Yeah, any other leader, but it isn't any other leader, is it, Sarah Southern? It's Boris Johnson, and we feel like we've been here before, and he has hung on, he has survived, he has continued to lead. Do you think this time it is different? Because he certainly doesn't think so. For him, he has replaced his Chancellor and his Health Secretary and his business as usual. It feels very different, for sure. You know, I think there's been other occasions, like, you know, post-party gate and such like, where we've almost given him a second opportunity to prove himself, you know, are you going to sort your team out in number 10? Are you going to do things differently? But we've now absolutely hit the end of the road. We are up against that brick wall. There are no more options for him. I don't think we're really going to be giving him any more chances to prove himself. Um, well, I just want to put this to you because I was listening to a radio phone in on the way into Westminster today. And there was a, 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 a contingent who are still supporting Boris Johnson. And it's important to reflect that because... 
some of the people calling in who voted for Boris Johnson in 2019 were saying, hang on a second, why do you get to decide? Why do MPs get to decide? The people voted for the Conservative Party and Boris Johnson as leader. And Boris Johnson himself referred to it in the House today, talking about his colossal mandate. And the callers to this radio show were saying, look, only the people should be able to vote him out. Well, I think no, none of us.